Good evening and welcome back to another episode of Oceans Apart. Today we have again a very beautiful guest, our beloved stud muffin, Kyle Kusan, the founder of Caveman RX, the CEO of Handsomeness, doctor in uh, sexiness, and he's working right now on getting another doctor in. Uh, what was it again? I forgot. Holistic health. Holistic health, yes, yes. From your travels in uh, the Himalayas, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. With the uh, native Eskimos on the Himalayas. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. So that, that's also in the process right now. But a very decorated man. As always, it's always a pleasure to have you here. How are we doing today? Pleasure to be here, sir. Thanks for having me on. And... Uh, I'm doing outstanding. It's it's great to see you again. I got to tell you. And I really mean that. I I mean really great to see you again. Again. Great to thank, see thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's uh I missed you as well. Like it's been a while since we talked. I think it was like we talked again last last time in October. Yeah, I think it was October. Yeah, yeah, it was October. So it's it's been a it's been a damn long time. So um, anything you know massive happened since then for you personally maybe like you know what school anything like I don't know uh, I got the website up so that's good kept my promise on that when we uh, stopped talking <laughs> last time yeah, yeah. and uh, I just had uh, a great opportunity to intern with Dr. T in the strength and conditioning room at Springfield College so that was awesome oh so like, are you gonna do it or you, you were doing it I, I just finished, actually, so that was all last semester. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Damn. How was that? It was great. It was great. I really enjoyed being in the weight room. I mean, I worked with the throwers, and, uh, you know, it got me feeling a little self-conscious because everyone was stronger than I am. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely got some work to do. But, yeah, it was just great working with people. Yeah. Um, for sure dude no but the throwers man like they're animals i know like one of the guys i remember i think he like front squats for 10 or like 415 or something like that like you know like i was told so it's like they're like there's some big boys in there like some big girls you know like they're they don't mess around with the weights it's ridiculous oh uh, dude and it's funny because like they're the least energetic team you'll work with like they come yeah. in and and they're very hard to read and they're not pumped up <laughs> And then they slam plates on the bar and like even like the girls, I mean, usually bench press for females isn't super high, but I mean, they're benching 135 really well, which yeah. is impressive. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. Like it's, I mean, that, that, that's the thing too, because I was actually talking about that yesterday because um, I had my first training session with my girls and um, like for soccer. And then like we were talking about the one of the assistants was like, there's like two, three girls, which like, you can't really read their body language that well, you know. You can't really tell if they're happy. Like, they could be incredibly happy and excited to be there, but their face is just straight, like, blank, and, you know. And it's like, you can't really understand them. So it's like, you think they're happy, but you're not really 100% sure. So it's like, you're just, you're just kind of, like, trying to tell yourself, like, she's happy, she's excited, and just convince yourself of that, basically. For sure. Okay. Especially when you're doing, like, one RMs. And they hit oh. a PR and you're like, good job, good job. And they look at you serious and it's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, dude. No, but I feel like, honestly, I, I don't know why, but I've always felt that, you know, the whole track and field, like those people, they're always a bit weird. Like you don't really know. Like there, There's like very interesting personalities there. Because I feel like, you know, like basketball or football, baseball, soccer, um, volleyball, I would say as well. Like, those sports, it's, like, kind of more team sports. Like, everybody is, you know, like, either everybody is, like, very energetic or not really. Like, there might be, like, one or two that's, like, a bit, you know, the black sheep said that. But when it comes to track and field, you know, throughout those, it's, like, you don't really know. I don't know. Like, I guess, I don't know. It's, like, just not the throws. I used to know, like, it's the, like, the 100 meters, the hurdles and all those, like, those are kind of similar when it comes to the weight room. Like, the way they act and, like, you know, behave. And just like their body language like that. But again, like, they're very serious when they're down there, but they don't really always kind of 
are the most enthusiastic about anything like that you you can't really get out reach out to them that well. At least I that's like my experience from it all. No, that's an interesting observation because I I worked with just the throwers and the wrestlers mainly, mm. and um, but now that I think of it, looking at you know when the throwers were in the weight room, they or when the um, track and field athletes were in the weight room, they kind of handled themselves in a similar fashion to the throwers. I wonder if being that throwing and track and field are both like highly technical, that mm -hmm. people who like to live in their heads tend to be drawn to those sports or vice versa. Did the sport make them that way? It's an interesting. That, yeah, that is actually an interesting take, man. Like that is definitely an interesting take. But I, I have no idea, to be honest. Like, I, de I definitely feel like there is something in that. Where um, I would actually think I would want to believe that, like the preview, the the the, the first thing you said was like that they're that type of person. That's why like, they were drawn to that sport because it kind of allows them to um, deal with things maybe a bit easier. Kind of like it gets them, like it kind of I don't know. Like it just helps them with things, you know. So they, cause without that. It's like they don't have anything else besides like their thoughts and stuff. It's like that way they can somewhat take all that energy, maybe like those things, like towards something kind of thing. Like, I, but again, it's like I don't know. It's 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 actually something that could be interesting. Like in finding out, like you know, talking to someone, and just hearing you know different opinions and like histories and backgrounds. Yeah, and that's something for. Um... <laughs> Rat Bartholomew, the creator of the archetypes. Yeah, dude. That actually, I should send him a suggestion about that. I, I would actually want to know about that. That's just something really that would be really interesting to know. Yeah, I'm curious on what his thoughts would be on that. Like, are certain archetypes drawn to certain sports rather mm -hmm. than, or at the same time as having the personality archetypes? Yeah, yeah. But I have a question though, because like if you did it with, with Dr. T, uh, for people who don't know, like Dr. T is basically the like the strength and conditioning coordinator at Springfield College. Like he's the main guy when it comes to strength and conditioning, and who fixes all the, the internships, helps you know, and does the. I also know that he holds. I don't know what classes he holds, but I know that for the people who are doing their, their masters and maybe even doctors. Like at Springfield, like he does some like classes. He teaches some classes. I don't know exactly which ones, but I do know like that he has something he teaches. Um, but yeah, that's like a little quick background. But I, like one question about that is like, um, did you like, did you basically like, um, was he always there with you? Or like, what did you you know kind of shadow him like looking at what he did? Because I, from what I seen, like he doesn't really coach that much, or maybe he did while you were observing him. Like I'm just like curious about that. Mm, he's uh, he's an interesting person to watch <clears throat> and learn from because he has a lot of philosophies I never even thought about. Like, um, for example, with the wrestlers, that's when I saw him the most. He gave them Turkish get-ups as an exercise. And, and it's a technical movement, but he didn't teach it in a strict technical way like he kind of showed it once mm. and had them perform it and then he went and fixed whatever needed to be corrected yeah. as they performed the exercise it wasn't like all right we're going to start with a quarter turkish get up drill for weeks one through four and then we're going to go to a half turkish get up for weeks four through eight yeah. he was like here's the full movement get after it and then he would go around and coach them up as they were performing it, it was it was interesting because I've always done it the, yeah. you know, quarter one through four, half Turkish get up four through eight, and then work into the full. Yeah. Hmm. That is actually interesting because I'm kind of like similar with him and like that. Where it's like, you know, some it was like I said something, I just kind of show it immediately and then have them look at that and I kind of have them do it and then, you know, if. They do it like something that like they kind of now they're going to correct it, and if it's like perfect, then just like let it be, you know. Or if it's also if it's disastrous, then just remove that entirely and like just now we're doing something else. But that's the thing too. It's like I feel that uh, it's a bit hard. Um, like for example, like if you plan to do something like that, that's kind of why I think like you need to do 
assessments and kind of like have a bit like kind of an idea of what you like. So you can actually take exercises like that you can kind of more fix and not just, you know, ignore completely because they can't do the movement at all. Because I feel like if you just, you know, as the session, like mid session, you're like, now when I do this and you like do something else, it's like, I think I feel that it just messes with the whole organization of the session and then the person just might feel a bit bad because they can't really do it and stuff like that's a fact you know that's like something I've learned so that's like I've never really done this like we're not doing this but it's like something I thought about it where it's like you have to really think ahead so it's like you know if if it can't really be done then like kind of maybe like right there in the session do some like regression of the exercise you wanted to do but yeah, I agree. I mean, his, that approach, like his approach, I think in general is more hands on, like, go, go do the thing. And mm-hmm. then I'll guide you as you go. Mm-hmm. Kind of deal. And that's what I found was interesting with him. In terms of like one on one personal training, I could see how that would be frustrating if you give somebody an exercise that they can't do, and then you have to change it completely. But like, I mean, it happens sometimes even with assessments, you don't know somebody can't do an exercise and neither do they until Mm. they're trying to do it and they can't. And then you have to adjust on the fly. Yeah. 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 But, um, so like, is that something that you've taken then from him? Like, have you, um, implemented that into your own practices? Like that's, you know, approach or is that something that's like, you know, just an interesting, you know, perspective to see, but it's kind of like not really something that you would that you feel would like kind of benefit you somehow. Yeah, I think I've, I think it, it, it found its way weaving itself into my philosophy. I mean, I've always been, cause I come from the one-on-one sector into mm-hmm. group training. So like, mm-hmm. I've always been a proponent for taking any thought out of a movement. And that's why I went like quarter get up for weeks one through four, half get up yeah. for, because at that point it's so repetitive you don't yeah. have to think about it anymore. The technique is just like starting to happen on autopilot. Mm-hmm. But I see, I see an advantage to just kind of letting them go a little bit. And um, with that said, I think that I'm going to try to find my way to the middle of the continuum where I'm not on the extreme of strict and I'm not on the extreme of, well, here you go, have fun. I'm yeah. Find that middle. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I like that as well. That's that's the thing too. It's like I feel that, um, kind of like, whenever you go to like the extreme, it's not always the best thing. Because I was actually talking about that um, with my girlfriend. We were talking about it. it's like you know where, you know, it's if you go to one extreme, it's like it's not really the best. Like any extreme is not the best. You know, kind of if you just say like you're extreme exercising like you exercise a lot that's not really the best thing either because you need to do some rest but if you also go extreme like on rest it's not the best because you need to work out a little bit so it's like no matter what you think about it, just going full extreme somewhere isn't really the best but like having a little bit of everything kind of like trying to find that you know middle ground and kind of you know like getting your own kind of thing like that's so like a little bit here a little bit there so there's no really like there's not too much of anything there's like from a lot of, maybe a lot of things or maybe like a few things but there isn't just like you know like a lot of just like one thing or something like that, which I I, I just like that a bit more because it's it's a bit more balanced in my own opinion, and I feel like it's easier than uh, and also it's like easier to coach and like also for yourself like easier to have a more simpler life and a bit more happier life like that I would say because it doesn't really f- mess with your head or social life or friendships family or anything like that you know so. But again, like some people really like the extreme life, you know, but that's, you kind of got to know yourself pretty well to do that, so to decide what's best for you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, okay, like moving on, uh, we have a question from the audience. I'm just going to get it over with because I don't like this question, but audience member wanted me to mention it to you. So um, have you ever had a concussion? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, the reason why I was asked, why this recession was asked was because of your last name, which is Cushion, as they would pronounce it. So, concussion, cushion, they kind of see that it goes like, together. So, that's why the question was asked. That's a, that's a brilliant question. Thanks for, thanks for asking. <laughs> I don't know how many concussions I've had. I know it's more than two, but they're yeah. kind of hard to track. So, <laughs> yeah, I know that. Um, 
Honestly, I don't even know. I think I've had maybe like one concussion to be honest. I don't even know. Like, I feel like those are days you don't even remember because, like, you don't really, like, I feel like once it happens, like, you don't really even remember, like, afterwards, like, did I have a concussion or not? You just kind of move on with your life. You don't really think about it or something. Yeah, and I find, like, if you're an athlete, too, it's almost, um, it's almost like a pity card if you have a concussion and, like, you admit to it or it feels that way. Like, when yeah. I got mine, I was like, I, I didn't get a concussion. Like, I'm, I'm good. Like, don't worry about me. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But it's it's really a big deal, and you should definitely wait and have it thoroughly assessed if you think you might have one, because the implications to follow if you rush into things too early after one yeah. can be uh, seriously detrimental. Yeah, no, definitely, man. That's the thing too. It's like all these, you know, um, martial arts and boxing, kickboxing, kick, like all the, all those like sports like that would see, you know, has anything of punching and kicking. It's like there's a big, very big debate, you know, going on about if it's, you know, um, if to put like more rules for it or to really they kind of put some procedures to like make it a bit more safe, just because it afterwards, like the, you know, concussions that can happen or like you know the issues like that. Because I know, especially like in football, and uh, that's. And I like post, you know, like after you're done playing, that it's like um, some people just go a bit insane or something. Like that like, like they, I, don't, I don't know how many like, cases there are of that, but definitely like, I've read a few where it's like people just do some fucked up shit just because of like of their playing years and like, all those hits and everything. Like, it could, like finally catches up to you and boom, next thing you know, it's like you can't even be a functional human being, which is kind of scary though when you think about it. But yeah. Yeah, and like football players especially are are a population of concern because it's not only the concussion, but yeah. I and I don't know the data on this, but I'm willing to bet that a lot of them who have a high rate of concussions also have some sort of cervical spine herniations. And yeah. if you're compressing the nerves in the in the um spine, you're yeah. obviously in a bad way for everything you do in life so either that's a mental thing or you know whether it's your arms and leg movement proprioceptive abilities it's crazy yeah you know I, I totally agree man it's just i don't know like i just that, that stuff freaks the fuck out of me man because it's just <laughs> it's like i just don't can't imagine you know like one day like just like if it's a, like if it would be like one day maybe you forget who you are or like just forget for you like your family because that, that's that's like a bit more extreme case but it's like you know something that could happen is just it's i don't know it's a bit scary man when you think about it but <laughs> well i guess it depends who you ask i mean you know some people they're like oh thank god i don't know them anymore <laughs> <laughs> honestly i'm not gonna lie. i feel like if it would happen to um declan he would be very happy Oh yeah, like, he's one person I think would be very happy if he just woke up and he's like, he doesn't know who you know I am or you are or any of us like from Springfield. He would be very happy. I think he's like one would be very pleased with all that. That's for damn sure. For sure. <laughs> oh man, but there's definitely some people that that's very true. That's a good point. <laughs> oh man. All right, but okay, we got we got to move on to something a bit more happier. Um, so the so yeah, let's move on to the website. So last time we spoke, well, I don't think we put it on the podcast, but I remember you talking about the website you wanted to make, and I, I believe that most people know of this because I've actually spread a bit of word a bit, but we're saying it now like it's up. The, it's been like up now for what is it a month, two months? I think two yeah, months. Yeah, something around there. I mean, yeah, I like, keep changing it. It's not perfect by any means yet. But yeah, yeah. But like you did it for yourself, though, right? Like from scratch. Like you didn't have anybody kind of like helping you or anything. You kind of just educate yourself on how to do it and everything, right? Yep. That's actually impressive, man. Because I've actually been wanting to do the same thing. Like I think I told you that as well. Um, so, but that's that's a, that's a big motivator for me as well. Just kind of like get on top of that on like this year to maybe kind of pursue the same goal but um um like, do you mind maybe like telling like a bit like what was like what was actually what was the motivation behind doing this um, page like what was yeah what was the motivation behind it i guess reach um software is getting better nutrition coaching can be done remotely 
I can reach more people with what I think is something very good. Like, I mean, you know, I, I love what I do. I, I eat, sleep and breathe this stuff. And I think that I can really change a lot of people's lives mm. um, by going the online route and, and offering this technology to people. So that was the main motivation behind it. Um, I used Wix, by the way, and they're not paying me to say that, but you mentioned you wanted to make your own website. And uh, yeah. I used WordPress, and dude, it was so miserable. You you sign up for WordPress, right? And then every yeah. feature that you may need has a plugin for it, and that plugin costs $200 a year. So if you need oh, three wow. features on WordPress, you're paying $600 a year on top of the 280 something dollars for the WordPress subscription. Jesus. And I, it was just, I, I, I couldn't, I'm stuttering right now because it's getting my blood boiling again. I just couldn't do it. So, <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah, because the thing is, I, I can remember I did it, um, I was, it was, it was a really long time ago. Like, I started doing like WordPress kind of like a blog or something, but I wasn't a big fan of it, you know, too much. Just, I just thought that. I don't know, I was very restricted and think if you wanted to get like the full access to it, you had to pay and I just, I didn't want to do it because I wasn't like really that dedicated about it or anything. So just, I, that wasn't a big fan of it basically, that's kind of what it was. But, uh, yeah, yeah. But, I, but I've seen a lot about this with the Wix that it's like, so it's supposed to be really good though. Yeah, and it, 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 WordPress is the best software for blogging, but there's a huge learning curve. Like mm. you can't, like with Wix, you can edit the page as your audience sees it. Mm. So it's literally just drag and drop. With WordPress, you got to like open a separate window, select the area of the page in the separate window mm. that you want to edit. And mm. then you have to open like three more windows to format it and make it look not like it was just... I, yeah. It, it wasn't for me. Maybe it's for some people, but uh, I spoke yeah, with WordPress yeah. engineers and they didn't help either. And now I'm stressing out about it. So go with Wix if you are on the fence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, man. So, but I actually have a question that's like, cause from what I was understood though, and like looking through the website and everything, is that, that you don't really have um, like any specific programs that you like have that people can buy. It's more that, you know, they kind of like schedule a like an appointment with you like I don't know you either online or in person as I'm assuming and like kind of as a consultation and then you or like do they ask the questions and then you kind of you know make the program from there like kind of like so because I, I from my understanding like, like is that how kind of you're doing like it's not like you know they have to answer some questions and then based on those questions or assessments you do a program for them afterwards if I'm understanding correctly yeah I mean this is more of um it's not like a one-off program. What you're getting through Caveman RX is direct access to me, and it's it's one-on-one -on -one personal coaching. So it's not like I'm giving you an ebook with sets mm. and reps. Yeah, yeah. It's okay, yeah. it's that I'm talking with you. We're gonna do some Skype video calls just so I can get a better idea of where you're at. And even when you subscribe to the coaching program. We're going to continue to do those Skype video calls just so that we can make adjustments as we go so you continue to see progress. And it's not just on the fitness side either because, you know, the, the software I use has a fitness component to it. Mm -hmm. But we're also tracking nutrition and we're adjusting those um, parameters as well. Okay. So, yeah, it's it's more of coaching with me and you're just determining the amount of time that you think you can benefit with mm. the coaching or that you'll need coaching for okay well that's actually a good thing because then like for example like i if i want, want to you know if I'm in sweden for example i could do that with you because then it's like i don't really have to show up in person especially through the skype calls you know so if i have any question i think we can actually do it through skype and like actually have a conversation you know one-to-one -one like that yeah, exactly. And I mean, Skype isn't necessary either. You could do a phone call or you could just yeah. stick to texting. Um, some yeah, people yeah. like it. So I make myself available for that because I think that right now, the way you and I are communicating, the information is being um, transferred instantly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I, I think it's helpful. But yeah, I find that one-off programs 
they don't tell you what to do when you're finishing the program. It's just like, here's an ebook, follow these sets and reps yeah, and yeah. draw on your own. So if you start to plateau during the program, you have no clue what to do. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, and, and every program through Caveman RX is completely custom. It's not like I have a yeah. fitness program that I'm just sending to everybody. It's yeah. yeah. No, that's the thing too. Especially I was talking about, um, both with my girlfriend and also with Declan, where it's like that, you know, uh, I, because I think that it's like, wait, I, I want to set up, I want to do like a page, like a website like you've done, but I kind of want to do it like in a similar fashion with you because I don't like where it's, you know, you have this, this like five programs, let's say, and they each cost maybe, I don't know, let's say $50 each or $40 each, you know, and it's like, but then it's like, there's a prescribed amount of, you know, whether well, there's like a strength program, there's like an aerobic endurance program, there's like specific programs, like whatever goal you might have, like a prehab maybe and stuff like that. But it's like, I feel that that specific program with the amount, like those specific exercises and the amount of reps and uh, sets and everything might work for one person or two, but it's not going to be the best for everybody. And that's kind of where I don't like this idea where it's like you're selling someone a lie because, you know, sure, like it, it does maybe increase the strength, but there could be a, even a better program you could do, like customize it for someone based on their needs and like where they are right now and their goals and like, you know, and that. So it's like, that's, that's, that's the issue I have right now, like all these problems that you see, cause it's like so many people do that. And it's just like, I, I get it. Like, you know, if you need like money and like kind of, you have to start like, somehow like that, but I just think that it's like also, you're a bit like lying to people that way. I would say like, this is again, my own opinion with, like, because I, again, I feel that if I would you know, do a program like that, a strength program, you know, it's not going to be the best thing for everybody. It's going to be good for like, that one specific person I have in mind. You know, I'm like picturing someone in my head, like this person who has maybe, you know, he's a former athlete, uh, a lot of training history, you know, very well coordinated, well developed, you know, and then if someone who you know, has never been an athlete, you know, wants to do a program, it's like, now maybe they're going to be the best because like, the exercise may be a bit more too um, complicated for them. So it's maybe better to do something else with them, but you know the progress of strength, and they're like, oh, like that's what I want to do, increase my strength. That's so yeah, yeah. I I'm with you on that. I felt like it's it's not a honorable way to offer what I live for to people to help them change their lives. Yeah. No, yeah, that, that's exactly what I mean, man. So that, that's that's kind of also why. I really like what you're doing just because of that reason, because it's like, it's more honest and genuine, you know, it's not like you're like trying to sell something. It's like, I, I, I can almost imagine, like, I don't know, you can tell me, but I think it's almost a bit harder to get clients maybe that way because of the way you're doing it, or maybe it's even easier. I don't know, like, how, how, how do you think or experience it? I mean, I'm still, I would, I would agree. I would say like, the clickbait sells. If you just write keto and then you put a picture of an avocado, you're going to get like 50,000 views yeah. on Instagram, you know, and yeah. this way isn't like, it's not the sexy way, but it works. It's a proven way. Yeah. And if you're trying to hit your goals, like every, everybody who's done anything amazing has had a coach on their side, you know, even yeah. Tony Robbins, who's like the coach of coaches, he's yeah. had coaches. Yeah. yeah. So, it it's just one of those things but it you're, you're right it, it's it's not the easy route but it's the honest route and i think that it'll pay dividends down the road no yeah definitely man definitely well that's the thing too it's like i think and i really want to hope well, actually i don't want to hope i kind of believe that you know people are going to understand and realize that whatever that like, they see you know this instagram or youtube it's it's it's, it's good stuff, you know, but it's also, there is better, you know, it's like for almost the same price or even a bit maybe cheaper, like, or maybe a bit more expensive, but it's like that, you know, but that's the thing too, is that like competing with all of this, like that you see, um, like people posting, especially like on Instagram, I would say, like both, that is like a very toxic place, I feel, where people put up a lot of bad stuff. Like, for example, like, do you know who Bradley Martin is? Yeah, I do. Yeah, well, that's what I mean, because like, that dude, like, for example, like, you know, like, he's, he's a legit lifter, like, that man can move some weight, but the issue, though, is, like, you know, he posts videos of him doing, like, the most stupidest thing, 
ever, you know, it's like having some girls sit on his shoulders with also a barbell and then doing squats for that. I was like, how is this even, you know, anywhere good? But it's like, it's, it gives the views, it gives the likes, it gives, you know, the shares and it's like, oh my God, like we're trying this as well. And kind of, it's like, I get it, you know, it's a good thing, but I think, and I want to hope that people are going to understand and realize that like, this is not the right way to like, wait, is it, yeah, is it the right way to do it? It's like, there's a much better approach, you know? So it's like, but right now we're in that phase, unfortunately, where it's like, that is selling. And it's like, you know, you look at these, uh, I think for, for men, it's like, you look at someone like Bradley Martin, you kind of think, oh, to get that big, I have to do what he's doing. Or like with the girls, you know, like the way they look, you kind of look as a female, you look at them like, oh, they're doing this, I have to do that as well. Like, and sure, it, it's not like, you're still gonna see results, but, they're gonna take off in my eyes, like for my own, it's gonna take you longer, and there's a more risk of injury on that path than take another path that's much more thought out and you know more precise than just like some stupid stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. And like you can look shredded, but inside you can be very, very unhealthy. And I was like the poster child for that. I I got to a point where I was like taking five or six protein shakes a day. Yeah. And- my if if my stomach wasn't in pain for like one day that day was a good day mm-hmm. I, yeah. I was always in it was just awful yeah no i, I do I, that that is the worst man those, those protein shakes too like they can really mess you up <laughs> for sure yeah yeah i'm using um i've switched over to like fattier protein shakes believe it or not and i find that that helps okay but when you do the protein, do you, do you take them, like, when do you take them, like, only in the morning, or, like, do you take one or two during the day, or, like, what is your, do you have any, like, sh- procedure with, when you take them and stuff? No, I just take it if I'm having trouble hitting my protein throughout the day. I don't know. Okay, what to run. okay yeah. I don't drink it as, like, a foundation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the, the thing is, like, what I've um, started doing is, uh, I kind of do it in the morning only because I feel like in the morning um, I don't really have the time and almost like the will as well, maybe on the weekends, like, but to do like a proper breakfast for myself. So I'll just have like some, you know, oats with some berries, like, you know, like that, but like it doesn't, there's like almost no protein and all that. And that's so, like that way, you know, having like, some protein shake to go, like kind of just on your way to work in the morning or, you know, like, yeah, to the work, it's like, much better because then also you know you don't really have to sacrifice i say sleep so you're able to wake up earlier to do all the breakfast stuff like that because you could also prepare like the night before but then you're also limited to a few very specific options like overnight oats was a huge thing for me like that but it also that is like not really like that protein rich so i definitely that's why that's why i think like you know like you're doing as well like you know it's like when days when just you don't really are hitting like those numbers that you want to hit having like one shake is good but also like you shouldn't be too dependent on it because that's also not the best because preferably you do when i get it uh you can you know more about this than me because you're more of a like normal nutrition but that you want to get it from actual foods and greens and that yeah the the problem with the supplements is that they're denatured protein basically <laughs> So yeah. the body is either going to put it back together or it's not. And depending on the protein that you have, the grains themselves may not be digested fully and they're just cutting up your intestines, stuff like that. But um, it's the the closer you can get to natural, the better. So like I'll mm. use collagen protein. I've switched over from whey to collagen. Okay. Um, and I'll actually add 10 grams of collagen protein into my Bulletproof espresso. <laughs> It's not quite bulletproof coffee, but <laughs> it's, it's espresso and it's flavor. It's unflavored. So you don't taste it and it helps mm-hmm. you just, you know, those 10 grams actually help when I log it into, um, my food tracking app. So, yeah. Hmm. But do you feel that, that that switch has helped you then? Like, do you feel like there's no problems like you know, intestinal bother like that? Yeah, I do. For me, it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing too. I feel that's like really hard because that's because of all the different proteins. That's like you know, does your body react? How does your body react? Because I remember like once I bought this uh, vegan protein, I was thinking because like I was like, oh, well, it's vegan. So like, because before like the other ones like they used to mess with me, like, but the vegan one should be pretty like should be an issue. But nope, 
it was the same story, if not worse. So like, even just because it's like that, you think like, okay, like it's vegan protein might be a bit better. Like, no, like you really, that's the thing I think is an issue where it's like, you can almost like have to try and error kind of different brands and different types of protein that that's the ones that like works specifically good for you and your body. Cause unfortunately like there isn't like that works, you know, best for everybody. Unfortunately, like, that, would, that would be great if that was the case, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The less, in, the less ingredients, the better. I think we don't get enough collagen as it is. So like, you're not going to be in danger of, um, having, of being hurt internally from an excess amount of it, you know? Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe give it a shot. Like you could get a collagen protein bar too. And just to test it out, see how it feels. Mm. That's what yeah. I ended up doing. Cause protein bars that I was having would just sit like a rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's exactly man, the exact same thing for me. <laughs> man. But I, I actually want to ask, I actually have one question about that. Like, where did this, like, what was the inspiration behind the name, like, Caveman? You know, where, where was the, what was the deal with that? Uh, yeah, the idea is that we were at our best from an evolutionary perspective when we were cavemen. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen, like, the pictures of the ape walking and slowly turns into a man. Yeah, And yeah. then we've updated it. So now the man starts getting more and more hunched over into a desk. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's where it comes from. It's basically the idea that you don't need supplements and you don't even really need to diet per se. Mm -hmm. We are naturally equipped to be our best from both a physique perspective and a health perspective. It's just unlocking those genetic expressions to get you there. And that's really what Caveman RX is about. Caveman, what we're trying or what you know, our best was, and then yeah. RX, like, the prescribed version of our best. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I like that, because I was like, you know, caveman, I was like, okay, like, I, I actually like the name a lot, man. I thought it was like, it's really creative, and I kind of thought that that's kind of what you did mean by it, but I wanted to ask, you know, maybe there was a different, you know, mean that you had to it or something, but I kind of figured that was what it was. But it's really good, though. I really like it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but I also was like, wondering, so... Um, like with it, but on the website. So, if do you also do like meal plans and stuff like that for people? So, like, they were like, kind of maybe like you schedule an appointment with you, and then you can have talk with them, and then they decide to like do some programs with you. Can they decide themselves? Like, do they just want to do just programs or just nutrition, or is it like both combined together? Or like, kind of like do you have different offers? Like, kind of like how is it you know set up? Yeah, it's it's very malleable. So like you can have just fitness if you want and you don't want the nutritional guidance. I would highly recommend getting nutritional guidance, if not from me, definitely from somebody else. Um, if you're getting it through me, I don't offer specific meal plans in terms of you need to eat this exact food in this exact amount at this exact time, right? Okay. Like because you need um, because you need biotin, you need to have broccoli at 7 a.m. and it has to be no less than one cup. That's out of my scope of practice. Yeah, I can't yeah. do that. I'm not a registered dietitian. What mm -hmm. I can say is, look, here's a macronutrient distribution that'll get <laughs> you to your goal. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll coach you on adjusting it day to day, whether it's carbohydrate cycling or what have you to mm. help you either gain or lose or get the six pack or look amazing or feel great. Um, and, and truth be told, all the studies out there, they don't really show a lot of evidence behind meal timing per se. Mm. Um, as long as you're getting those certain macros throughout the day, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily matter. Like if you're an MMA fighter and you need to be dehydrated for a win or, you know, you're a bodybuilder about to go on stage, then those advanced methods come into play. But typically, I mean, just to have a six pack, you don't need to eat exactly every 52 and a half minutes. Mm. You yeah. know, you just need to get 180 grams of protein in a day or whatever, you know. So, yeah. so I do offer 
individual or I offer the whole package. A lot of CrossFitters like to stay with their CrossFit gym, and yeah. that's fine. Um, so I'm not going to step on toes and say, hey, start doing my workouts. I can just be the nutrition coach because that's all they need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely, man. Definitely. That's a really good idea because you know, if they, if they want to stick to their CrossFit gym and they're happy with that and just want some nutrition, then there's no point in trying to convince them that, like, oh, no, you know, don't do this program instead, you know. It's like, it's just, there's no, because I feel that way it's just, there. It's just not going to do any good for either you or them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely, man. That, I guess so, um, but like, what's the nutrition then? Like, do you have them kind of tell you roughly what to eat, like, throughout the day? Or, like, what, maybe not what to eat, but kind of, like, how often they eat, like, how many meals and at what times? Or is it just, yeah, kind of, do you have any, like, that kind of procedure with them? Yeah, it depends on the person. Um my my main focus is to make sure you're eating your macros throughout the day and mm-hmm. like i don't know how much you weigh but say you weigh like 175 pounds mm-hmm. 180 you want to have 180 grams of protein throughout the day yeah it's really really effing hard to get that protein in because it's it keeps you full right yeah so, yeah so my main focus is just getting the macros in if i told you when to eat or how often to eat that's one more obstacle that we have to work together on. I'd rather say, how often are you eating in your daily life right now? Are you having three meals, four meals, five meals a day? And then if you say, oh, I'm having five meals a day, good, that's our baseline. We're gonna eat five meals a day, and I'm gonna break down your meals, I'm gonna divide your macronutrient for the day by five. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not good at math, so let's just say um, 100 grams of protein is what you need in the day. Every meal, you should be having 20 grams. Yeah, exactly. But that's the thing, too. It's like, you know, because, like, almost nobody needs 100, they need more. But then, like, when you think about it, that's, like, that's a lot of protein to take in. It's like, like, if someone is eating only three meals a day, that's a lot of protein to have in every single meal. Like, that's, and it's, that's, that's why it's, like, so damn hard to get that, because, you know, it's a lot of protein, man. It's a lot of eating. So it's like, you know, being also good at making sure that you do eat because you can get caught up in work or something else comes up and, you know, then you're just like, not really time to eat. So you skip that meal and then maybe eat something. Maybe, so you skip like a lunch and eat a bigger dinner. That is not going to do it. That's not going to do That's almost going to do more harm for you than benefit, you know, because like, it's just, it's better. That's kind of why the consistency is really good. I actually watched uh it was john cena i believe like he was talking i was like i think he had like in the morning he had like a protein shake but then every two to three hours he will have either a meal or a protein bar just to keep getting the the protein in but then again it's like you know what's i think it's really hard still though because like most protein bars today like they're pretty expensive and if your economy isn't the greatest you can't really afford those protein bars so it's like then it becomes like also but what do i do and that's like where, like, if you can just pack like a small, maybe like a little snack and like maybe bring that on with you and I like, get like the, just eating that way. But then again, like, you need to like, take the time away and like actually eat the food, which can also be very like hard. So I think like, honestly, like I feel like, like the protein part, that's just like, where like, the real struggle comes into. I actually, you know, fit that into your schedule, you know, that it's, it's damn hard. And especially like you're saying, it's also very filling. So it's like you eat and then, you know, two, three hours you need to eat again, but maybe you're not hungry. So it's like you almost have to force yourself to eat again. So it's, yeah, that, uh, yeah. So it's like that is again, like, at least from my own experience, like kind of and what I would think is like it's just trial and error, you know, trying out what fits for you and your lifestyle at this particular moment, basically. Yeah, and that's that's why I like the method where you just kind of divide the macros by the meals you're eating because you're stacking mm-hmm. a habit on a habit that already exists. Like if mm-hmm. I'm Let's say I'm not like the fittest guy. I'm eating three meals a day, mm. which is which is good, right? You're already eating those meals, so let's not focus on adding a new meal and all the meal prep that goes with it. How about we just continue to eat those three meals, but we'll just hone in on what goes on your plate a little bit. Mm. And then as you get really good at that, maybe we can add a snack like um, a healthy meal prepped protein bar that you prepped on a Sunday. So mm. it's just those smaller steps. I mean, and, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It, just those smaller steps go a really long way. Mm. Yeah. 
No, I totally agree with you because that, that's the thing I'm going to like making a drastic change is not the greatest, you know. So, yeah. But what I also want to say though, like, I don't know, like, what, I, wanna, like, I don't know what you think about this, but I'll say like, say if you do need like you weigh 180 pounds and then you need 180 um, grams of protein, but say you have three meals and then you um, maybe have let's say 40 grams of protein at each meal. That's like with 120 grams, it's like you're below by 60, and I think like. You know, that is also a good start, I would say, for someone, for example, like say that they are eating maybe, they need 180, but they're eating maybe like 30 grams of protein. So like increasing that number by just by 10 in each meal that they have, I think that's like still progress somehow. Like they're still below on what they need, but we're kind of moving in the right direction. And I don't know, like, I, mean, like, I think you agree with that, or maybe you think maybe, maybe you have something else that you think is better than that. Yeah, no, I, I do. And I had a nutrition coach and um, that was actually my exact problem is I wasn't getting protein in mm. and it was a two step problem. First, I don't meal prep. I just don't. Yeah. Um, and then secondly, um, I was so full that even though I was macro conscious, I just wasn't hungry. It's like, yeah, I got to eat these. I think it was 205 grams she wanted me to have. I got to eat these 205 grams, but like at 160, I'm full, bro. Like I'm full. <laughs> yeah. And, um, in that case, looking back, like if I was the coach, I'd say, all right, I would dial your macros down to 165. Mm. Let's strive to hit 165 for a little bit. Once you can do that consistently three or four days or a week, mm. maybe we'll up it to 170. Mm. Yeah. which isn't even the number that you were talking. I think you said 120. So I would down it to 125, yeah, and yeah. 30. And, yeah. and just kind of take those incremental steps. I mean, you have the original target. Mm -hmm. The way I see it is if your target's 180 and you get above 100, you did really, really good. Yeah. Okay. And then what I it's now my job to make this goal up here, this target, mm -hmm. not seem like it's the top of the Himalayan mountains. But yeah. to lower it. Let's mm. go to 125. Yeah, dude, no, I, that, let's see, yeah. but yeah, that's, that's the thing, though, man, because, like, I don't, even for myself, to be honest, you know, it's kind of like, I, I kind of just go more based on, um, I've been trying to just like, go based like, whenever I want to eat, I eat, but it's kind of also that, I, I, I want to go up in weight, I want to go up to, like, uh, I weigh right now like almost, I think like roughly like 180. I want to go up to almost like 190. And things like, I need to eat a lot, but at the same time though, that like, you know, just some days you just don't really want to eat. That's the thing, you know. So it's just like, it's it's a it's a it's about a thing like what you're saying, which I totally I fully agree on. It's like you kind of take a little bit by little bit, you know. So if it's you're doing like 180 grams of protein right now. You need more than they kind of increase it by five grams in every meal. That's so it's like very small steps, and then do it for a week, maybe two, and then. But it's like it's just about the consistency and doing it, and all. So that's I think that's like the most important thing. I feel like that a lot of people just. And I also like I want to say that to people like, that you know, if it were to happen, like you miss one day and you instead of being 180, you just big change. Like you got like 120. It doesn't mean that you should just stop and like oh just like for start over like that. No, it's just like, get back on it and just get again like the 180 the next day you know because so that, that sometimes it just happens you know sometimes you just totally forget and like you're just like so up in maybe work or something that you totally forgot that i should was supposed to eat like i needed some like this protein but i need some more protein like it happens you know just it's not an end of the world yeah yeah there's no reason to be weird about it like you don't need to carry your laptop with you everywhere you go yeah and at every meal open it up and start tracking your food <laughs> you know like it's just you can hit your goal without going to that like way extreme of being weird about things yeah yeah and exactly. uh and dedicating your life to that yeah don't sweat about it yeah um also we have a little guest that wants to say hi to you oh, she's, she's very shy but she's, she's sitting here and making fun of me because I'm saying mm, yeah to you whenever you're talking. So, yeah. That's great. Is it That's... nighttime there right now? No, it's only 5 p.m. But the thing is, like, I don't know how it's actually in the U.S. right now, but during the winter here, like, the sun goes up maybe around 7, 30, 8 a.m. and goes down at like 
2 30 p.m or 3 p.m 3 p.m latest so it's a very short time like if any it's like sunlight so it's like you know you i'll walk out at 4 p.m and think like is it eight like is it night and i look at my time like no it's only 4 30 like what wow. the fuck like, it's like half the day left you Dude, know just, how do you it's... keep up with your tan <sighs> no it's gone man i'm whiter than <laughs> i'm whiter than snow like it's bad, bad, but you know, it's just, it's just, I've, I've reached your level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's hard to do. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, but, but I don't know. But honestly, the thing is, like, I feel that you know, you have to embrace it as well. Like your, you know, your white side. You can't always be tan or like that. So you just gotta accept that. It's... Yeah, I believe the word you're looking for is pasty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that is a very. That's exactly what I was looking for. Exactly the word I was looking for, man. <laughs> yeah, like I can't, I can't wear yellow because my skin almost looks yellow yeah. when I wear a yellow shirt. Yeah, yeah, People yeah. start yep. asking me if I have jaundice, and it's just. <laughs> oh man, Jesus! I I can totally relate to that though. That's the thing too. Where it's like, I never buy anything like that because bright colors, you know, they they might be okay during the summertime, like once you've gotten the tan on a bit, but not during the winter times, because it's just, nah, it, it, this no. isn't, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't, no. it doesn't fit. Well, man. Uh, oh, do, do you have any questions you want to ask? We're just going to sit there. You were supposed to ask about the, like, the motivation test. Oh, okay. Um, we have a question, live question from an audience member. Um, Motivation tips, right? So do you have any motivation tips for, well, both for our audience member that is sitting right, that is sitting right there and just for everybody else listening? Yeah, I would say don't count your days. <laughs> okay, well, what do you mean by that? Like don't count your days. So like when you make a New Year's resolution, Mm. It starts on January 1st, obviously. You're like, yeah. I'm going to go to the gym like every day. And mm. you find yourself two weeks in and it's like day number 14, I'm at the gym. Mm. If you're counting your days, you're not actually making a change. You're just seeing how long you can keep something up for. Mm. Stop counting your days and just do it. That is some solid advice. That is really some solid advice. Even I needed to hear that, to be honest. Yeah, like, that, that's a very huge thing. I actually, that that's really, really good advice, man. Because especially, especially right now with like what the resolutions that people do at New Year's, it's like I think that's also why so many people don't really hold up to them because it's just like thinking like how long can I do this for instead of just you know trying to make it into a habit. Kind of goes back to like you, know, you have one that you miss, and they're like, okay, like, ah, fuck, I missed, and that's it, you know, because we're cutting those days, like the streak is gone now. But just because the streak is gone doesn't mean that you know you should stop doing it. You know, I actually, actually, like, on the funny story, like, yesterday, for example, um, I asked one of the girls, like, you know, I was, like, she was saying, like, yes, yeah, I went to a gym, like, I had a seven-day streak. I'm, like, oh, that's awesome, and what happened afterwards? She's, like, oh, I had to rest. I'm, like, okay, but, like, <laughs> I, I don't really need you to go for a seven-day streak to the gym and then just not go at all. Like, I'd rather have you go three times in that week, but actually go again three times next week and then, you know, go three times. It's, like... I, <laughs> But I just thought how funny how like she was so happy and confident. It's like I had a seven day streak. I'm like that's awesome. But what and then what? It's like I I didn't go. I'm like but like, why would you stop going? Because like just I don't know. You know like I, again you need to rest. But like then just go back after once you've rested enough. You know. But yeah like so, like it was just it was just funny to hear that because I just didn't know what to say. I literally just laughed a bit and smiled. I'm like okay it just yeah whatever. <laughs> Yeah, you're losing energy by tracking the amount of days you're doing something consecutively. Just mm. go after it. Whatever your goal is, uh, you don't need to put any more energy to counting the days, which is a distraction. Mm. Just go get it. Yeah, man. Get after it. Yeah. At 4.30 a.m. 3.30 a.m. <laughs> Up before the enemy. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be for the motherfucker Jocko, yo. <laughs> no, that's right. I text him my watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
But, <laughs> oh man, dude. yeah, exactly. Like, let him know that you know that there's someone out there, you know, that's getting after you before him. You're not that great, Jocko. <laughs> Get on your shit, man. You gotta step up, step up your game. Wakes up uh, at three thirty every day. I'm gonna wake up at three twenty nine tomorrow. <laughs> Watch me. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I could just see like you know you sending him like gets uh, the morning text at three thirty a.m. Good. Can wake up earlier. You yeah. know, it's like some bullshit he would pull on that. Like for fuck's sake, <laughs> man. But um, yeah. Um, I think this is a good way as uh place to stop unless there's something else you want to you know share or thoughts ideas questions maybe you have uh no i mean if you have any questions about building a website and anything on that end you know feel free to reach out mm-hmm. i definitely don't recommend wordpress unless you like spending a lot of time working on a website yeah yeah um, yeah I am I am actually working on a program right now. It's it's more of like a cohort actually where I'm going to be taking five people uh through this program to lose 10 pounds of fat sustainably in the next 60 days. Uh-huh. So like what we talked about if you're really just fed up with the uh supplements out there mm. and the fad diets, save your money. It's it's not supplement based at all. It's just more of like the habit coaching method. Mm. And, um, I can only take five people. So yeah. because of that, and I'm still working out the kinks. So for those two reasons, I'm launching it at this like really drastic discount. And, um, if, if you're interested or, you know, somebody who's interested, just let me know. I am mean, definitely will definitely, will. I'm going to reach out to us like, on the social media, promote it a bit. Maybe have our beloved guests here on lying on the floor. Might want to join. Yeah. But, what? What? But, uh, uh, yeah, so just quick then, like, if people want to reach you, like, what's the easiest way to reach you, like, you know, questions or to, like, website and all that stuff, you know? Yeah, um, cavemanrx.com. That's kind of my hub right now. Okay. My email is kyle at cavemanrx.com. And uh, I'm been really active on facebook lately i'm still trying to figure out how to link facebook and instagram together so once mm-hmm. i do i'll be active on instagram as well <laughs> yeah but, uh, you could reach me through any of those email would probably be the quickest response or a facebook message okay awesome yeah and i'll put everything also in the description link for people to see as well so they can just follow like that but yeah man, well anyhow thank you so much for again blessing us with your knowledge um really awesome as always talking to you and having you on this podcast and uh yeah dude thank you for being such a stud muffin yeah thanks for having me man i appreciate it <laughs> all right man. well we have to get you back and then we also have to get declan here for once as well because we need to get the holy trinity back indeed Indeed, we do that. That'll be fun time. Can we do a three-way call on Skype? Is that possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we did we did it with his dad. We had his dad on the podcast, so like we was was, we did that. So like, it's definitely possible. Well, I figured his dad would probably be in the same room as him, so you would only need the bilateral. No, no, no. But actually, we didn't even do like we also did it with uh, Eric M. Hogan. I don't know if you know him. He's also at Springfield College. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like very short guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah, we did with him as well. So, there was also, like, us three talking then. So, and it, it worked perfectly. So, yeah, we definitely can do it. Very nice. All right, cool. All right, man. Well, thank you once again. And, yeah, thank you for everyone listening. Thank you to our loyal fans. And thank you for the beautiful Hi. questions. If you have any questions, send them in or ask them live if you're with us in person. <laughs> thank you very much. And... Uh,